is in Boston and generally in the mid-60s everywhere else. Down in the tropics, there are a few areas being watched by the National Hurricane Center. I'll be talking about those and also the complete forecast right into the middle of next week, perhaps some Indian summer to talk about. I'll have that for you in about 10 minutes. Craig? Thanks, Jim. After a bitter campaign trail battle, Boston City Councilor Rosaria Salerno has thrown her support to acting Mayor Thomas Menino. Salerno's endorsement marks the start of a war between the Menino and Brett campaigns to attract progressive voters. Here's Fox 25 reporter Audrey Laganis. A kiss between former rivals. And with that, Rosaria Salerno threw her support to acting Mayor Thomas Menino. I believe he's the candidate who will best carry forward our proposals. I respect the hard work and deep commitment that Councilor Salerno has brought to public office. She's a model for inspiration for her colleagues and for the residents of Boston. It was the first endorsement from a former candidate, one who fired sharp criticism at Menino during the preliminary election campaign. Menino's rival, Representative James Brett, flanked by his own progressive supporters, including State Senator Diane Wilkerson, dismissed Salerno's endorsement. But to give the impression that uh, her supporters are now all ready to uh, jump ship to support the acting mayor, I think is misleading. But in the end, political strategists say personal endorsements don't mean as much as endorsements from large groups like labor unions. That's because group endorsements usually translate into votes and contributions. For example, a union endorses you, you can expect, uh, in addition to just being able to use the, the name of the institution, you can expect probably money from uh, a political action uh, group if they have one. Uh, phone banks being made available to your volunteers. As the campaign continues, both Menino and Brett will compete to be seen as the candidate of change, and progressives will help decide who wins that title. Audrey Laganis, Fox 25, News at 10. Hundreds gathered to honor Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Ginsburg received a special award from her daughter, Jane Ginsburg. The younger Ginsburg is a law professor at Columbia. Ruth Ginsburg said her daughter was an inspiration during her law school years. I attribute my successful first year at the Harvard Law School in part to her company, to the balance she gave to my days. Life with a 14-month-old, Jane's age when I started law school, simply could not be all work and no play. The pair is the first mother-daughter team to graduate Harvard Law School. Coming up next on the Fox 25 News at 10, Massachusetts Senator Ted Kennedy was in the state pushing the president's health care plan. And thousands put their feet to the pavement to raise money for Alzheimer's disease. We've got that story when we return. Taking a look at news from around the nation, Defense Secretary Les Aspen may be giving the Navy's top officer the axe for failing to prevent the tailhook sexual harassment scandal. Aspen is meeting with aides in the Pentagon and won't make a decision until at least Monday. Yesterday, Navy Secretary John Dalton said Admiral Frank Kelso showed a lack of leadership and should be forced to resign. The crew of the tugboat that slammed into an Alabama bridge, sparking the deadliest crash in Amtrak history, spoke out for the first time today. Lawyers representing the crew members say they couldn't see the bridge in the heavy fog because it had no lights or reflectors. Railroad officials are calling their argument self-serving. The September 22nd derailment killed 47 people. Well, the FBI says the number of crimes reported to police nationwide went down by nearly 3% last year. It's the first annual decline since 1984, but it's not time to relax. While the total number of crimes went down, the number of violent crimes is on the rise. Several Bay State officials participated in a public hearing on health care today. In Quincy, Senator Edward Kennedy and Congressman Gary Studs led a discussion on how Massachusetts would be affected by the Clinton health care proposal. A longtime supporter of national health care, Kennedy says the state can contribute to the health care change 
because of the area's large medical community. I think the, uh, the most difficult challenge we're going to face are the very special interests, which uh, today are uh, making uh, billions of dollars under the current inefficient uh, system. They have a lot to lose uh, with health care reform, and I think they're battling. All you have to do is uh, li listen to your television for about 20 minutes and you get another ad. And what they're basically doing is distorting and misrepresenting President Clinton's uh, program. On a wide variety of Kennedy expects a formal health care proposal to be ready within a year. Well, thousands of people in 165 towns across America had a common goal today, raising awareness of Alzheimer's disease. It was the first National Memory Walkathon, and it was held in 48 states. Organizers hope to raise more than $3 million to help the families of Alzheimer's victims. Still ahead on the Fox 25 News at 10, Jim Corbin has the latest forecast for the rest of the weekend. And students who go to UMass may be paying a stiff price for underage drinking. The story is coming up when we return. What's the call, Red? On a Monday afternoon, bringing just a few clouds but no major problems. And in the tropics, nothing much going on either. A couple of weather systems being watched by the Hurricane Center, but we're past peak. And uh, good news down there, nothing to worry at the present time. Let's get to our forecast. It looks this way for the rest of this evening and tonight. Clouds will be moving in. If they're not where you are now, it'll be breezy out of the south and mild. And a few rain showers moving in. It's already raining lightly in western Massachusetts and much of Vermont and New Hampshire. And they'll be moving into the Boston area sometime after 2 or 3 in the morning. Temperatures, though, only in the mid-50s. Kind of gloomy to start the day tomorrow, but don't worry. By mid to late morning, the sun will come out. And it will be a little cooler than today. Temperatures in the mid-60s, but that's just about normal for the early part of October. Lots of stars tomorrow night. A cool breeze in the 40s. And the outlook now for Monday, mainly sunny in the 60s. A little cooler on Tuesday. And then by the middle of next week, Craig, we may be talking about temperatures back into the 70s and maybe some Indian summer weather, which uh, today was sort of a hint of that with uh, 74. How did that sound? Okay, so not a bad week. Not a bad week coming up. Don't All worry right. about the rain in the morning. All right, thanks a lot. Coming up next, today, Boston College quarterback Glenn Foley did something not even Doug Flutie could do. Jimmy Young has details. And Linus doesn't need to look for the great pumpkin anymore, Charlie Brown, because we've got it. More when the Fox 25 News at 10 returns. Guys, we got the next one open. Good job. Jimmy, the Eagles were flying high today. That's right, in the carrier dome. It's tough to eagle fly inside a dome, but they did it. You know that? You know, there is life in the Boston College football program tonight. The Eagles go into Syracuse's carrier dome and come back with a 33-29 upset of the 13th ranked Orange Men. Glenn Foley, a career day with 423 yards passing. And he had to get them all. Here, he'll find Ivan Boyd for a 24-yarder. BC up 26-22. Then Marvin Graves put Syracuse up 29-22. All the scoring here in the fourth quarter with 527 left. Darnell Campbell airborne for the touchdown. BC back up 33-29. But Hughes will drive with a minute 22 to play. Brian Howlett, the interception of a Marvin Graves pass. And the Eagles seal it with a 33-29 upset. Way to go, Eagles. They are now 2-2. Two and two. They are the surprise team in the Yankee Conference, the surprise team in Boston. They are the unbeaten BU Terriers. Today's victim at Nickerson Field, Villanova, 30-15. to 15. Robert Doherty, another big day. But uh, the defense with a big day as well. Under pressure is Villanova quarterback Eric Pearson. He's picked off by BU's Chris Helen. And then Eric Pearson again gets sacked in the end zone. BU is up 16 to nothing. They led 16-8 at the half. Rob Doherty here, the seven-yard touchdown pass to Jason Andrade. Doherty, 22 of 39, 323 yards. He is the subject of the coach's comments after the game. I think he sparks our entire football team. Um, he's a big play player, and I think everybody rises to the occasion when he makes those big plays, and I think it raises the level of their play as well, not just on offense, but on defense as well. And we checked the scoreboard in college football and looked at Harvard's 700th career uh, win in history. Richmond beat Northeastern 24-21. Elsewhere, Rhode Island beats Brown. Princeton blanks Holy Cross. UMass knocks off James Madison. And Tufts picks up their first win of the year over Bates. 
The National League West race will go down to the final day of the season, at least anyway. The Braves and the Dodgers both won their 103rd games today. They will play their 162nd game of the season tomorrow with a pennant on the line, or at least if one team wins and one team loses. For the Braves against the Rockies, no low contender, Ray. No contest for the Rockies. Bottom of the first, Dave Justice, the RBI base hit, scoring Otis Nixon, one nothing Braves. Next batter, Terry Pendleton, the RBI single, scores Ron Gant to make it two nothing Braves. And then in the sixth, Fred McGriff with the double, scoring Jeff Blauser to make it 7-1 Braves. They win it 10-1. Greg Maddox picks up his 20th win of the year. Meanwhile, the Giants keep pace by beating the Dodgers 5-3. Seventh inning, Giants up 3-2. Dave Martinez, the double to right center. Will Clark and Barry Bonds score to make it 5-2 San Francisco. Eighth inning, San Francisco's got 5-3, but the Dodgers load the bases deep, goes Dave Hansen. But it'll be caught. And San Francisco holds on for a 5-3 to three win. Well, the Red Sox lost for the fifth straight time, so what would you rather see? More Sox lowlights or preseason Bruins highlights for the last time? Our vote, the Bruins. And it was a good one. Tied up 2-2 into overtime we go. And the Bruins will win it on Dave Reed's second goal of the game, giving the Bruins a 3-2 to two win. There's Cam Stewart's goal right there. He was the first Bruins goal scorer of this game. And uh, Dave Reed did win it in overtime with the goal to make it 3-2. to two. Uh, The Bruins' last preseason game will open in New York against the Rangers on Tuesday. All right, Jimmy. Thank you, sir. Well, uh, okay, New England, look no further. The great pumpkin has arrived. In fact, more than 20 of the state's biggest showed up in Topsfield, Massachusetts for the 10th annual New England Giant Pumpkin Way Off. Our own pumpkin hunter, Doug Meehan, has more. 630 pounds. This is what Charlie Brown may have been waiting for in the children's story of the great pumpkin. All total, there were more than 52,000 pounds of gargantuan gourds lining the grounds of the Topsfield Fair in Topsfield, Massachusetts. If you really want to see pumpkins, this is the place to come. And so they did, as hundreds took in all the excitement of the 10th annual New England Giant Pumpkin Way Off. It's an agricultural event. Nancy Pache of the fair says this event was one of three way offs held in the Bay State and one of a handful held across the nation. In Windsor, Nova Scotia, they're weighing pumpkins. They are in Anamosa, Iowa, and in Nut Tree, California. Ron Rico's 695 and three quarter pound Atlantic Great Pumpkin couldn't beat the national winner weighing in at 884 pounds, but it was still the prince of the patch in New England. And for that, a $2,000 prize. I probably put 3,000 gallons of water in this one plant, which only had this one pumpkin on it last week alone. And I'm hoping the water helped give it the extra weight to really make it heavy. All of the contestants had their own special green thumb technique, but all seem to agree it's in the seed. You have to. 